Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete series, and we are going to get ready to start Chemical Kinetics. So this is typically a session or a chapter that you would have in a General Chemistry 2 or a second semester college chemistry course where you start looking at the rates of reactions and how those rates are affected by concentration, by rate laws, the order of reaction, things of that nature. And we call all of this chemical kinetics. Kinetics meaning the motion of the molecules and how they behave in these rates. So in order to take a look at this, the first thing we want to do is take a general look at rates of reactions and how we can express them in regards to chemical reactions and then as well as how these concentrations are going to have an effect here and play into the way that the chemical kinetics will occur. So that's what we're going to do here. And then the next lecture that we will take a look at will introduce what's called the rate law and the rate constant. So when we take a look at the rate of a reaction, a rate is going to be considered some speed or a change in concentration over time. So it's how quickly the reaction is going. And that means that when we talk about a rate, we can usually refer to a rate with a unit of concentration per some unit time. And the most common here is molarity per second. So that will be the unit that we utilize for rate. Now, when we talk about rate, we can consider a very simple reaction to start with. So let's just consider compound A goes over to compound B. And we want to express the rate of this reaction relative to A and relative to B. So what's important to realize is when we're talking about this for A, we're talking about a loss in a one directional reaction. Now at equilibrium, you might have formation of A, so that can be a little bit trickier. But when we're just talking about a single direction or a mostly one direction reaction, we're going to talk about the product here is being formed. So this would be a gain. And the reactant is a loss. And that's important because if we think about signs associated with this, we really have a negative and a positive here. So if you see a negative rate that we are expressing, it's referring to the fact that it's a disappearance of a compound. And then a positive rate is talking about an appearance of a compound, right? So there's still the absolute value of a rate itself, which is talking about how quickly that material is being either lost or gained. Uh, but that sign that we put in front of it is telling us whether it is a loss or a gain itself. So we can express this as the rate for the reaction that I just wrote above is equal to the change in concentration of A over some period of time, meaning a change in time. And what's important here is that I need a negative associated with this expression because the A, I'm expecting that it will disappear over time in order to become B. So I can also set this equal to, right? So, or I can express my rate as the formation of the concentration of B over some period of time T. So that is how I can express my rates for this reaction. I can express it relative to A and its loss or I can express it relative to B and the gain of the product. Now, this is a case where we have a one-to-one -one ratio. We have many examples where there's not going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. So let's just take an example like that. Again, keeping it simple, we could have 2A is going to go over to B. Now, if you're familiar with equilibrium, and the more specifically the equilibrium constants, we would usually take the uh, coefficient, the stoichiometric coefficient, so in this case two in front of A, and we would raise the concentration to that power. That is not going to be the way that rate laws work. So when we get into talking about rate laws and how we're going to take a look at this, it is not just that you take the exponent of whatever the stoichiometric coefficient is, okay? So the way that I can express this 
is you want to take a look and we're saying here that I've got 2a for every 1b. So it takes 2a to disappear in order to create 1b. And the way that I can express this is that the rate for the reaction written above is going to be negative 1 half delta A over delta T. Okay. Or, or equals delta B because there's only a 1 in front of that and delta T. All right. So it's again negative because it's a loss. And that two in front of there, because there is two of this, right, we're going to put a half here because this is only going to be going at half relative to B since it's a two to one ratio here. Now, let's take a more complex example. And I would encourage you once we write this to pause the video and attempt to express the rate law relative to every reactant and every product. So we're going to have four NH3 gas plus 5O2 gas yields 4NO gas plus 6H2O gas. So try to express the rate law in four different ways. Express it relative to the ammonia, express it relative to the molecular oxygen, express it relative to the nitrous oxide, and express it relative to the water vapor. See if you can pause the video and do that, and then come back and unpause it and see how successful you were. Okay, so the rate that we are going to have for these, well, we know that any of the reactants are going to be negative. And I'm looking at this exponent, it's a 4 here, so it'll be 1 fourth delta NH3 over delta T. So that's one possibility. I can say, or this can be negative 1 fifth with respect to delta O2, delta T, or now switching over, I need to be positive here. Okay, this would be one fourth, but no negative. And that would be with respect to the delta NO over delta T. And then finally I could say, or let's express it in the form of water vapor, which would be one sixth, the change in concentration of water over delta T. So those are the four ways that I could express this. Now, what we're going to end up doing, and we'll take a look at a problem like this in just a second, is that you want to be able to set these equal to one another because let's say that I only have information for the concentration of one of these. Let's say that it's the oxygen. If I have that information and I know that the time that has elapsed, I can find a delta T, has a certain concentration of oxygen that has been lost, then I can find this rate right here, and I can express the rate of the reaction relative to this. So therefore, again, every time these ors are here, they're essentially equals. That means I can find the rate of the appearance or disappearance of any of the other compounds involved in this reaction. So all I need is the one, and if I can find that rate, then I can manipulate it and find the appearance or disappearance of others alongside with that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and attempt one of these problems that is going to be slightly more complex here as far as actually using numbers. Okay, so for this one, we will use four NO2 gas plus O2 gas is going to yield two moles of dinitrogen pentaoxide gas. All right now, for the problem, we're going to say at some time t, the O2 has a rate. Now remember 
when we talk about rate, we're talking about the molarity per second is the value here. So it's going to have a rate of 0 0.037 molarity per second. Okay, And we're going to look for two things here based on this information. So A, we want to know at what rate is NO2 O5, or excuse me, N2O5 being formed. Okay, so at what rate? And then the second thing that we'll do is we'll say, okay, at what rate? is the NO2 reacting. All right, so we were given information about the oxygen and we're going to find information about the rates for the product and the other reactant here. Now, let's get started with this. What we want to do is consider what's known and what is known here is the O2. So we know that the concentration change of O2 over some amount of time, T, is equal to, right? and it says up here 0 0.037 molarity per second, but I have to remember that this is negative because it's a disappearance, okay? So the problem up there is giving the absolute rate value but I have to keep in mind and frame that this is a negative here because I'm talking about the disappearance of this compound because it is a reactant, not a product. So when I do this, what I can do is if I have this information, I can say, all right, how do I relate these two through the rates and setting them equal? So this is for A right here, all right? So what I can do is say, I know that the negative delta O2 delta T is going to be equal to, now I need to look back up here, okay, so for the N2O5, there's a 2, right, whereas there's only a 1 or an implied 1 in front of the oxygen. So that means it's a product, so it's positive, and there's a 2, so it'll be 1 half delta and to O5. Okay, so it's very important that you're able to express these properly because we're going to need to be able to set them equal to one another in problems like this. So what we can do here is we can say, all right, then we already know what this value is. We have it right above here, right? But we have to keep in mind that this negative is still here because this negative is showing the relationship to the one half of the N2O5 here. So it's going to be a negative, and then what's the value here? Negative 0 0.037. And uh, let's actually, I'm gonna back that up. Let's just keep the unit here, okay? So this should be molarity per second when we're working with this. And that can be set equal to 1 half delta N205 and delta T. So now you can see where we're headed with this. If we want to find N205 being formed at what rate, all I have to do is solve for N205 over delta T by itself. So that means that I really just need to multiply by the reciprocal. So multiply by two, that'll get rid of the half, but I have to do it to this side as well. So 2 times a negative value in parentheses is going to be a negative 2 times negative 0.037 molarity per second. And this will be equal to delta N205 delta T. And if you solve that and put it in your calculator, you find that it should equal 0 0.074 molarity per second. And we can check this because 
a negative times a negative is a positive value. And not only that, but this is a product. So products are forming, and I would expect a positive sign associated with them as far as their rate. Now, when I get ready to go and solve for this one in just a second here, uh, NO2, the nitrogen dioxide, is going to be a reactant, so I would expect a negative value for that one. All right, so speaking of which, B, at what rate is NO2 reacting? So we're going to do somewhat of a similar type of problem-solving exercise here. So for B, we're going to say negative one-fourth delta concentration NO2 over delta T. And remember, if you're asking where's that one-fourth coming from, if we take a look at the balanced equation, there's a four up here. So we're going to take one-fourth. Okay. And then when we have negative one-fourth plus the rate value there, we can set it equal to negative delta O2. Again, this is still negative because O2 is also considered a reactant. All right, so we can say that this side is going to be equal to, we've already done this, a negative negative O37 molarity per second. All right, now the next thing I would need to do is get rid of the one fourth over here. I'm going to do that by multiplying by negative four because it's a negative one fourth. So that'll get rid of that. And then I'm going to be multiplying a negative four here. So a negative four with a negative value out here makes that positive. So I'm going to have a positive four times negative 0 0.037 molarity per second, almost there. And then if you solve for that, you end up with a negative 0.15 molarity per second. And that is the rate at which the NO2 is disappearing in this reaction. It is negative 0.15 molarity per second. All right, so that ties up everything we need to talk about here as far as rates. So two very important lessons here. Number one, you need to learn how to express rates for each individual portion of a reaction that includes the reactants and the products. And then once you've done that, if you are handed information on one of those, you should be able to find the information on the others like we just did by setting them equal. This, I will admit this is tricky because there can be a lot of manipulating with negative and positive values, but the more you practice it and get used to it, the easier it'll become. And we'll certainly see other examples as we're going through this uh, online course here talking about chemical kinetics. So that is going to wrap this particular lecture up. As always, like if the video was helpful, it helps to boost the algorithm. And I know I say this every time, but it really is important. When we boost the algorithm, it allows for more income and it allows for us to get higher ranked results. And when we have higher ranked results and we have improved sessions like this, that means that I'm freed up to make more material. So that always helps us. Again, donating your time just by watching and learning with us and picking us out as the channel helps very much so. Um, remember to head over to chemcomplete.com. We've got free resources over there. If you are struggling with any type of kinetics material, I offer individual one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Um, it is very affordable in price. And I also have guides that are available for purchase. And we're planning to expand our guides this upcoming fall for additional subjects. So go check that out. It's a useful website. Um, and as always, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to hit the bell so that you are up to date, especially with the fall coming. We've got new semesters getting ready to start. You want to be up to date with all information as it's being released. So until next time, thank you so much for learning with us. I really appreciate it. And we will see everybody in the next lecture. Thanks, guys.